I just want to take a little time in the next couple of videos to talk briefly about some of the alternative techniques for discretizing the Navier-Stokes equations that we solve in fluid mechanics context. We'll talk about the finite volume method, spectral method, and the finite element method. You'll remember that we've been focusing primarily on finite difference methods throughout this series of videos in order to get a good handle on how to solve elliptic and parabolic partial differential equations. And let me just summarize a few of the aspects of finite difference methods just to remind you of where we've been. So first of all, we start with the governing equations in differential form, the usual form that we're familiar with, and we discretize them using Taylor series based approximation. So the underlying mathematics is very straightforward. You learn Taylor series in your first calculus class, but it gives us this powerful technique for approximating partial and ordinary differential equations. It ended up giving us a very general and flexible framework for discretizing, in our case, Navier-Stokes equations, but any other set of ordinary or partial differential equations, including linear and nonlinear equations as well. And you can include other types of physics in as well. In terms of grids, you'll remember that we focused on structured grids and using transformation-based grid generation in order to handle complex geometries. So we talked about structured and unstructured grids. And in the case of finite difference methods, we're typically thinking in terms of structured grids. And to take care of fo grid focusing and complex geometries, we use grid transformations. And again, finite difference methods can be applied to ordinary partial differential equations in any field. However, there are other techniques for discretizing and solving numerically partial differential equations, either in fluid mechanics, heat transfer, or other fields as well. Remember, we're talking here about step two of the numerical solution procedure. We start with the real system. We apply the physical laws and approximations and idealizations. That's the first step to get our governing equations. And then the second step is to discretize those governing equations to get a set of linear algebraic equations, which we then solve in step three. So we're focused here on step two, finite difference methods, and now also finite volume methods, finite element methods, as well as spectral methods. Now the finite volume method is really specific to fluid dynamics and heat transfer. It was developed specifically for these types of problems for reasons that we'll discuss in a moment. But finite element methods and spectral methods are very general and used well outside of fluid mechanics. So you'll see these used in solid mechanics and electrodynamics and, and a whole host of other fields in science and engineering. So they're much more general. The finite volume method, which for reasons that again I'll talk about in a moment, is very popular in commercial CFD codes such as ANSYS Fluent, which is a very popular general purpose CFD code that's used in industry, as well as the open source code, open foam. Both of those are based on the finite volume method. And the reason why is because it allows for unstructured grids that can be applied to complex geometries. So unlike finite difference methods, it allows us to treat those more complex geometries that are found in industry context. Now that may sound familiar, that's the whole point of finite element methods is to provide that maximum flexibility on structured grids that can accommodate all kinds of different complex geometries. So finite volume methods and finite element methods are increasingly in competition with one another because they have some overlapping strengths. Now as I'll remind you in a moment, the finite volume method starts with the conservation form of the governing equations. And then we integrate them to get the integral form and that's the basis for finite volume methods. Finite element methods, similarly, are based on the conservation equations in variational, or what are sometimes called weak form. So again, we'll see that in a, in a later video. Spectral methods, on the other hand, are a completely different class of methods. They're not local like these other methods that we're discussing. It's a global technique, and it's based on eigenfunction expansions for differential equations and it's extended to be a numerical method that can be applied to general partial differential equations such as Navier-Stokes. It's very popular in DNS, direct numerical simulation, where we're solving all of the scales, including those small little tiny turbulent eddies, where you need highly accurate solutions and you want to get them as efficiently as possible. So we'll discuss that in the next video. Here, let me discuss finite volume methods just in a few slides just to give you a brief overview of this approach. Remember, we start again with the conservation form, which we had in an earlier video. The u vector here has all the conservation or flux variables contained within it. And then the other vectors, f, g, and h, contain the convection and diffusion of those flux variables. And then the j contains all the source terms, such as body forces and so forth, that might be acting on a particular flow. So we take this differential form in conservation form, and we integrate it over a finite volume 
that's the finite volume method, and that gives us 11.2. So we're integrating over the area that covers a surface, as well as the surface itself. But what that gives us then is the integral form of the conservation equations, which we can then apply over small control volumes. We call them cells, and they're essentially just tiny little control volumes across which we're conserving mass and momentum and energy and so on. So this is perfectly analogous to what we learn in thermodynamics, for example, when we talk about conservation over little control volumes. So we're now doing that where each node, each grid, is actually a cell control volume or the finite volume that we're discussing. And then we enforce conservation of those flux variables over each of those tiny little finite volumes. Now the terms in our integral form can be evaluated using finite difference methods or finite element methods, whichever you prefer. And then, there's, and then those are applied across each control volume in the domain of which you could have thousands, tens of thousands, or even hundreds of thousands of these little cells. So then we discretize the integral form, and that results in an algebraic system of equations. So just like finite difference methods, in the end we get a system of linear algebraic equations to solve. We're now just getting that system of equations in a different way, so it will be a different system. But in the end it's just a big linear system of algebraic equations that we solve using matrix methods. Now because the finite volume method directly treats the domain as a set of control volumes, this really gives us a lot of flexibility in how we define these little finite volumes, different shapes and sizes and orientations. So we can easily have unstructured grids, we can accommodate complex geometries, and this is why then they are popular in commercial and open source CFD codes, as I mentioned a moment ago. Here's a couple of references if you're interested in more information on finite volume methods, in particular, Fersig Repair Street. This is now in its fourth edition. It's an excellent book. I highly recommend it and it focuses primarily on the finite volume technique. So if, you're, if you want to learn more the details of this approach, that's a great place to go.